All right, 1151, let's call this meeting to order. Thank you all for being here. Really, really, uh, let me just take a look at you for a second. Hey, guys, thanks for being here. Uh, this, I guess, I don't know. Uh, we will probably take 20, 30 minutes until the uh, Legends lunch will begin. There's some setup that needs to happen. And I'll say it now, but hopefully my devotion proves as well that how about members, owners of the mission vision of Legacy Church can maybe help set up a little bit, you know? So if you guys want to help out for us, that'd be pretty cool. Let me pray, and then we will begin. God, plain and simple, I just lift up Legacy Church. The, the people, the families, all of their needs, their hopes, their dreams, their giftings, how you've made them, how you've called them, how, where you've placed them. It truly is a, a blessing. Every single person here clearly, clearly preached into the converted today. I love every single person in this room and I know them deeply. God, I just thank you. Uh, I, I pray that we can celebrate a bit, maybe reminisce and be a little bit nostalgic about the ways you blessed us last year. And, I, and, I, and I, I do pray for those that are here and for those that will be watching this, hopefully through their email, uh, through our church, that there will be a, a recommitment to you, to your local body, to one another, to like we talked about today, not, not perfection, but day-by-day -day progress for your glory, for our good, because we love you, and we love this community, and we love this church. God, may you use us in new ways to build your kingdom. Let it not be about just the name or a person, but it's you and your healing power and your grace. I do pray a special blessing. I just, God, I pray you bless every single person that's here. They're a member. They've said you can count on me. I'm gonna help further the mission of God right here at 5545 Ardea. I pray you bless them, God, because I know they're precious in your sight and they're precious in mine too. So we thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to start uh, with my devotional, kind of my pastoral report. We're going to hear from a few more uh, people. You'll hear from Pastor Kirkley and Pastor Nick and uh, Kyle Favel is going to talk a bit about uh, the food pantry. And then, of course, we'll do financials, we'll talk about Del Rio, and we're going to set up and have ourselves some, some burritos. And, but I want to talk about a little bit, and hopefully it feels like a reminder because you've heard it Sunday after Sunday, kind of a bit of like what I'm, I've been praying about uh, for this new year. And I know that from the others, you'll hear a lot of kind of the cool things God did last year, but you know, I tried to say it kind of ad nauseum that the 2022 is a year of progress. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm praying for, that that, 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 you know, we've talked a lot about pruning and planting, and so I'm asking that God would mold us and God would shape us. And so, so with that, I, I've, I've been kind of thinking about or really reexamining, so what does it mean for you and I and the people that come to our church, what does it mean for them to progress in the faith through Legacy Church? What does specifically spiritual progress look like as a member of Legacy Church? Maybe a, a kind of blunt way to say it is like, what do we do with you when you're here? How do we mold you? How do we shape you? How do we help you progress? And I, I think the best way that we can help you progress is through ACDC. Sorry, I forgot the slides aren't going to come up. So I forgot. Sorry. Let me get the slide. There we go. Through ACDC. Yeah, closing prayer. No, that's an acronym. Let me explain to you what that means. This is basically kind of a discipleship funnel that I've been kind of thinking about, so I want, to, I want to put it before you so that you can be thinking about this and praying about this, because, again, I think uniquely in this season that we are in, that people need to be reminded of this, but again, it needs to come from us. It's like, hey, come be a part of Legacy Church, because this is what it looks like to grow and to progress in the faith through Legacy Church. And I hope that not through gossip, but I hope that as we go through this very briefly, that you'll kind of be reminded and the Holy Spirit will bring people to mind. You're like, yeah, they're there right now. So what does it mean to progress through, or at rather, not through, at progress at Legacy Church, and just a fun acronym to help you and I remember, it's ACDC. So uh, next slide, which ACDC stands for, uh, alternate current, no, uh, it's aware, connected, decided, committed. Aware, connected, decided, committed. So look at that just for a little bit, and then of course we'll, 
we'll, we'll break it down. And I think these kind of, and, and this is not reinventing the wheel. This is real basic kind of church discipleship assimilation. But I think the last two years have really changed a lot of things kind of in cultural Christianity in our community that I really wanted to go back to the basics with you and I, the how do we progress, how do we grow in the faith. And so if we just think about this, aware, connected, decided, committed, of course, aware, uh, this is, it's not limited to these things, but it's stuff like watching online or attending an outside event. And I'm preaching to the converted. You are members, okay? So you, but you, you know this. You probably won't hear me say this this blunt on a Sunday morning, but we know that covid it distanced us. It isolated us. And so what, what, is, what has happened is that people just were too stressed, too anxious. The whole world was falling. Right? The sky is falling. Uh, but then what, 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 what should be an on-ramp, watching online, being aware of us, has now become a parking spot where a lot of people are just like, I'll tune in a couple minutes a week or maybe a month or maybe like, we can see the analytics. The average person watches for 30, 45 seconds, right? So most people are stuck right there. And again, that's not... Holy Spirit progression in the faith for their own soul. You, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to the membership here. Could you imagine if you just watched 30 seconds, or just, no, let me not say watch 30 seconds, if you just were a part of the Legacy Church community for 30 seconds a week, like, you know, like, all of you, I can see your faces, you are, you are committed, right? We know that it would be a detriment to our own spiritual health and a huge detriment to the spiritual health of every single person that comes to our church. So a lot of people are there right now, aware. The next step would be uh, connected. And it's cool. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but we are seeing people come back to church. That's really cool. And so that's cool. So to, to me, connected is kind of just infrequent church attendance. Like we see them every now and then, kind of every other month. Like we see them around. They would consider this church their home. They're not really shopping around, but they're, they're not invested. They're not really committed, but they are kind of connected to our church. That, that makes sense? Don't worry. I know we have burritos on the brain and in the stomach. Not in the stomach yet. We wish they were in the stomach. So I will keep on moving. Um, decided, of course, is, would be salvation and baptism. Uh, regularly attending. And then to me, it's like that's, they're a part of a group. They're a part of a class. They've gone to our men's breakfast. They, they've gone to uh, one of the women's Bible studies that Debbie Dawson has been doing. You know, they're, they're a part of a group. They're, they're a little bit, they're being known. They're not strangers anymore. And of course, committed would hopefully be everyone in this room, you and I. That we are fully committed. That we, that we first, we've, we've said that we're going to be members of this church. You can count on me. I'm going to set up shop here, right here. That they're serving that they're tithing, and then with that, they are also inviting so that other people can start listening to ACDC, right? So more people can come in and begin to progress through the faith. And I, I, I know this, this is like so nuts and bolts. I hope this doesn't sound anti-spiritual, but I was really trying to practically think through what does it look like? What, as your pastor, again, what do I do with people that are here? How can we help them? And again, this is not exhaustive. Like this doesn't mention missions trip. This doesn't mention, like there's so many other ways in which they can be, there's like preaching and serving and getting an opportunity. Like that's all a part of it. But to me, that's really the basic story structure, and I hope you guys can, can, can write that down, take a picture of it, and be praying with me, because I'm, I'm praying for more and more and more moments that people can progress, that they can move forward in the faith through this church, that they're going from strangers to being aware, connected, decided, and committed, and that's what we're trying for this new year, a year of progress, really trying to accomplish for our church, but of course, your members, so I need your help. So let me, let me talk very briefly, I promise briefly, about what I think are some of the obstacles to us progressing this year as a church, as, as a body of believers here at Legacy. Some things that have just kind of, just kind of gotten away, kind of missing the mark a little bit. And so let me just kind of really sp speak specifically to them, uh, and then, then you'll hear from Pastor Kirkley. Uh, so, so, so to clarify and again to hopefully correct some things, I think what COVID has done, there's some, this kind of cultural acceptance. We've really kind of lowered the bar for ourselves spiritually. So I want to speak very directly, and I feel like I'm really preaching to the converted, so feel free to yes and amen me. I know this is an annual business meeting, but it kind of should feel like second service that ends with burritos. So, uh, so uh, the first thing is, is I want to just kind of declare, and I want you to hold me to this, legacy church. Our church should be a place where you receive care, not just content. Legacy Church should be a place, should be the place where you receive your care, not just your content. I wrote that right here. People are finally coming back to church. 
And that's really cool. And I feel like we probably said this this time last year. I think people are going to come back to church. But they're actually finally coming back to church. And that's really cool. Uh, But we all know people have been so disconnected, so isolated. So they are coming in. They have marriages that are broken. They have kids that are traumatized. They uh, They are beat up. They are depressed. They are anxious. They are coming into us. And they're reconnecting. And what I'm, I guess I'm just saying as your pastor, like the way we were disconnected, the way I didn't speak to some of you for months, like we just, it was just chaos of 2020 and 21, how isolated and how disconnected we were, I never want to have that happen again. I never want to feel that disconnected from you ever again. I never want us to feel like, yeah, we just kind of, t- you know, text each other every three or four months and that's it. Like we are a family And so at Legacy Church, I don't want it to just be the place that you listen to sermons, especially because there's so many other better sermons you can watch on YouTube with really cool production values and $200 million, you know, cameras. Like, this should be the place where you go to receive your care. That there are people here that love you. There are people here that know you. There are people here that you can count on. They are ride or die. They are there for you. You can call them and say, okay, I'm coming over, and we're going to pray. And then, of course, as your pastor, I want to be the person that gets to care for you, too. I'd love to be on that list. So this feels silly, for, especially for the people that are here. Um, I thought there was going to be like a big, like, oh, wow, that's cool, but I think you guys already got it. If you don't have my cell, we're going to fix that today. So, yeah, show up my cell. Um, because that was a thing that I wish everyone had uh, before March 2020. My goodness. I never got a call from you. I never had your cell phone number, and you clearly never had mine. You know? So if you don't have my cell, please write it down. Uh, I'm going to ask you to text me in like three or four minutes, so if you don't have it, you're going to look real silly when I don't get a text from you, but please make sure. Uh, 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 again, this should be the place. This should be this, this little expression of the kingdom of God. We don't just go here to, to just listen to sermons, to just listen to worship. It should be a place where we receive care from one another. That's what the people of God should be so good at. And again, like I don't want to be isolated from you anymore. I don't want us to ever feel that way again. We have to progress here, and we have to. And again, it starts with you and I, reminding everyone that comes here that we care about them, that we love them. And it's not just about the content. No, it's about caring for their souls as a part of Legacy Church. The second thing is this, kind of goes hand in hand. Legacy Church is in the discipleship business, not the event hosting business. The staff has heard that before, the board has heard that before, and now you're hearing it. Legacy Church is in the discipleship business. We are not in the event hosting business. Again, I'm so happy people are coming back to church. I'm so happy that people are making time for the Lord again, that we're seeing them, that, you know, and I I, I know this is a tender subject. This is a membership meeting. I'm talking to my family. Like, I know, like, COVID numbers are going down, and I'm just like, praise his name and keep it there, please, you know? And I know that, like, you might have a situation like, well, not for me and not for my home. But we are seeing people coming back to church. But again, like I already said, COVID seemingly in kind of cultural American Christianity really lowered the bar for what it means to be a part of a church family. Where really, again, I already told you, I kind of got ahead of myself here, that it's just like, hey, I'm watching online, what more do you expect of me? Or like, hey, I showed up, what more do you expect of me? And again, like, I'm so thankful, please don't talk to new people on Sunday and be like, you're going to be on the board next week? Because if not, you should listen to the membership meeting. Like, people are growing. Again, not perfection, we want progress. But I need your help, and I want you to pray with me. And I also, uh, especially about this particular issue, because um, it's, it's been, I, I feel like we're hitting a spiritual wall because it feels like it is near impossible to get people to do anything outside of Sunday church. Which again, praise God that they're here. Don't hear me pushing on them here. But here's the thing. Attending a service is not being a disciple of Jesus. Like we talked that, we read through that in James and y'all went yes and amen, praise his name. Right? Being, just simply attending an event is not being a follower of Jesus. It's being actively discipled and being grown. And so, if I, again, I feel like I'm preaching to the converted, but let me just share some of my frustrations. That it's just, it's just, it's really interesting to me. And I understand it's going to take time, but I need your help and I want you to pray with me. It just feels like everyone's saying, I'm here. Don't you dare ask me to do anything else that we're trying to do classes, that we're trying to uh, do events to get people connected. And we just, it's not like, it, not only do people not show up, but they don't even like respond back when we ask them if they're going to show up. And let me just speak real, it, it, uh, I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit to help me here. Like, we closed down P4L. And I understand like, we're a small church, 
But like, it grieves me to be like, yeah, we didn't have time for prayer. Like, we just, we just, we just closed down our prayer service. And, 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 and I know, like, Chad and Amber Langford, they, they cr- cried and prayed, and we met, and we talked, and we researched, and they did a survey, and the survey was basically, I don't know. Maybe we can do something else. And it, it, it just, I, again, I, I say that to say that we're trying to disciple everyone, and I want you to, to I guess, maybe share a bit of that, that weight of, like, man, it's getting difficult, because clearly, like, what we're currently doing isn't working, so, of course, that's my job to ask God and to try again as the pastor, but as the members, I need your help, that we're not just about hosting events, and, of course, we're hosting a huge event in a few weeks. It's called Easter. It's going to be great. It's going to be at the Lake Park, but just somebody just merely attending an event, that is not being a disciple of Jesus through Legacy Church. About, it's about them being known. It's about them growing. It's about them taking the time to invest in their own soul to grow in the faith. And currently, and I, I please, I understand, like with COVID and everything and everyone's schedules, I understand. But to me, that's an obstacle to overcome, not just something to park at and be like, well, I guess no one's going to, you know what I mean? We have to get past this. And I understand it's going to take time, but it feels like culturally within our church, we just need to push that bar a little higher and a little higher. And again, it's, it really is going to start with you guys inviting people to things. Come to the men's breakfast and come get to know someone. Hey, you know, after Easter, we're starting some classes. We're starting some discipleship. Uh, I, I'm, I'm working on a TBRI uh, parenting class that's going to be a part of the series I'm working on for after Easter, which is called Getting Past Your Past, really helping people uh, with trauma, uh, with, with really helping people, giving them to, to tools to, to be delivered. That's kind of the little mini-series we're going to do right after Easter. But I need your help to get people to get connected. And again, and it's not just, oh, wow, so we can say we have X number of people at P4L or X number of people. It's so that people are discipled, so that people are equipped, so that people feel like, again, this is the place where I am growing. And so then with that, of course, I've already hit this over the head with you, but of course then being a member of Legacy Church, it means that you've committed to contribute to this matter, not just merely consume. But again, we, we call it membership, but it really should be partnership. It really should be ownership. And again, the people that I'm seeing in this room, thank you for being here and thank you for being owners and partners with us. But it's, it's really, it's help us with this. Here's the vision. Here are the marching orders. Come on, church. And then we're all moving and growing and contributing together. And again, contributing to what? Very briefly, and then we'll end here, uh, or I'll end my, my devotion. I just want to remind you uh, of what I think the, the beautiful opportunity that we are uniquely placed as a Tascadero First Assembly, now Legacy Church. We've been here for 76 years now. Like, I, I think that name Legacy, I know it sounds prideful, don't put this in the minutes, Chad, but I think we get to boast about something like that because we've been here for so long. It's been generation after generation, family after family after family after family that has done so much. You're here because of someone else. And again, you heard, you know, hopefully you could come up here and say this better than I could. Now it's our turn. Now it's our turn that we as this church, we exist for all generations. First, to belong. Again, that's all about community. That's about welcoming. And your members, you're all officially unofficial members of the welcoming team, which we need to rebuild. And I need to talk to Monica about because she said she'd help me with it, as well as a bunch of other stuff, Monica. Right? We, we, we really need help with discipleship and getting people back involved in ministry. But all of you, officially, you're part of the membership team. I really hope you are talking and greeting and hanging out with people and making sure they feel welcome here. Because I promise, I could preach the greatest sermon I've ever preached if they don't feel love from you, they ain't coming back. They don't, they're not going to want to hear about the love of Jesus if we aren't giving it to them. It's all about belonging. And again, beholding. It's different than belief. It's not about be- merely like, here are the theological boxes. Did I perfectly check them all? It's like you've encountered the grace of God. You've, you've like, just, like, you know, that word behold is all over the Bible. Just like, wow. Like, I, I pictured the transfiguration of Jesus. Wow. God is that good? Wow. He is that gracious. And to me, behold is really twofold. That you experience that, and then you also get to experience him doing that through you. And that's why we do things like the food pantry. That's why we always talk about loving on the community. That people can behold the mercy and power and grace of God through you. And then, of course, course you know this become it's all about discipleship it's not like I got saved all right when's heaven you know (laughs) but we can all grow like we talked about today you heard me preach for way too long today it's the beautiful adventure of growing 
and trusting and being a disciple of Jesus Christ through this church. That's what we're about. We want all generations. It's not about, it's not a young church. It's not an old church. It's a, it's a grandfather's fathers and son, grandmothers, mothers, and daughters. We are a multi-generational church. I hope we continue to. I hope we get more different generations, different families. It's a small town. It seems like everybody kind of knows everybody. But they can come be a part and do something great for the kingdom of God through Legacy Church. So here's why I asked you to make sure you have my cell phone number. Um, it'd be really cool. Uh, I think I have one more slide, Chad, uh, just of, of my, there we go. Um, it'd be really cool if my phone just exploded right, right now with 36 text messages all at once that said something to the effect of, hey, you can count on me. Like, hey, you know what? I'm a member here. Feel free to text me. You can, you can, uh, you can make it your own. You can be like, you got it, Big Papa. I don't know, whatever you want to say. Um, but it'd be cool if I just got a text message from people. And I got to be honest, practically what I'm doing is if I don't have your number saved, I'm going to get it right now. And I'm going to text you and be like, you're a member and I didn't have your number saved. Let's start there. I love you, and I want to be your pastor more. And I think it starts by having your number saved. So I'd love that. Hey, I got something from Tim Wirtz. I am leaving the church. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bad joke. <laughs> Kyle Fable, I'm in. Yes, I love it. Let me pray real briefly, and then uh, please, uh, we'll cheer it up for Pastor Kirkley Peterson. God, I pray again. You would grow us and mold us and shape us and do something brand new and uh, in our people within our membership today uh, and in this new year as a year of progress. I thank you. Jane Sumner says you can count on the Sumners. Love it. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Give it up for our children's pastor, Pastor Quickly Peterson. Uh, I totally dressed up for the occasion, so thank you for having me. Um, and if everything I say goes on the record, I have a joke. Uh, is that, you ready, Chad? Yeah. Uh, told joke. That's not going to help anyone out. Um, so hi. Uh, you know, Patrick, I wanted us to talk about some highlights of 2021. And uh, so there's two, and I have some pictures for one, but I don't have any pictures for the first part because we wrapped our year up with that, and that was our Christmas play with kids. And I think there's probably three big highlights. We really, like really big highlights we had as far as as a church corporately, and that was Easter, and it was Halloween, and it was um, it was Christmas. And so I'll start at Christmas, work my way backwards. Christmas was awesome that we were able to engage. Um, we had like 20 kids participate in a play, memorizing lines, making friends, building community, it, very much like that tribe. You know, I, I still love, even months later, I see, I, particularly Alabama and Evelyn, they come running up to each other and they're like, yeah, because they were a part of the play. And so there's like these lifelong relationships that are cr crafting and forming. So Christmas play was really a, a, an awesome opportunity to use these gifts and talents that these boys and girls had. And to also a highlight is Amanda Cullen and Christina Dawson. They, they were like spearheading it and making it happen. There was a lot of other involvement, like Matt Ringer, and I'm, and I'm going to forget someone else. Uh, but um, we just had, a, it was just a really great um, event that we brought kids together to memorize verses and, and or memorize the the play and just participate and it was pretty cool. And then we did the the Halloween that got shut down by the cops. You guys remember that, yeah. right? I mean, you know, it's not a party until the cops shut it down. And it was really it was really good that we participated with multiple other churches and we were able to to put on this amazing event. And what's really cool is that is. Um, we're, st we're coming out of the pandemic and things were still weird and we weren't sure what was going to happen. And I even made like this little like squiggly line for cars. Like, oh, we'll just get the cars off the road. And that squiggly line should have looked like a, a print out of an intestine. It should have went like this, you know, so get cars off the road because we're backed up on the freeway. And, and it was really cool. Uh, the win was we were partnering with other churches. It, it wasn't just legacy church, you know, building our kingdom. It was us as churches working together to do something big in our town, to love on our community. And that's what um, I really did love about that. Working with Sandy Heshi from ABC, she was awesome and hardworking. And I think we put on a really cool event that we're hopeful for this year is going to take place. 
What's a win I was specifically going to mention, maybe because it's on my mind, because we have like three weeks away until it happens, and that's Easter. We did the uh, po- Pokemon Gotta Catch Them All. I had 20 volunteers and onesies. It was really cool because it wasn't just um, like the event. Like we, we watched kids at the playground during service, and we had, I think, overall, we had over 50 volunteers serving on Easter Sunday between worship and watching the kids and playing with the kids and then setting up our Easter event. It was just this really awesome event. And so we have these, these the group of 20 individuals running around in a onesie in April. And you think, oh, well, it's cold today. A onesie would be nice. It was a little warm towards the end. And note to self, wash those onesies because they might, they didn't get washed. They got put right back into a box. Uh, they were only worn once. I mean, that's a good label. Um, so we, we had this great opportunity to just love on our community. And we, we do a really good job with Easter and our fun events. And I, we always call them like on ramps. We want to, to like just, just love on our community and introduce them to who we are and what we do. And, and this fun thing, we, we had free hot dogs and it was just this really fun event. And we just didn't end there, which would have been like that day was a win. The additional win was that that night at six o'clock, Emily and I did our Legacy Kids online and while we were there, we dressed up in our onesies. I don't know if it's there. There we go. I was a Charmander, in case anyone was wondering. And Emily was a Espeon. Thank you. Who said that? Dan. Was that Dan? Dan. Daniel, my resident Pokemon uh, aficionado. Uh, so we, we dressed up and we just had fun. And while we're online, because what we did is that Easter Sunday, we invite everyone back, come back tonight, six o'clock. I know it's Easter Sunday, but we're going to play a game. We're going to talk. We're going to show some pictures. We're going to have some fun because we, once again, and we, we want to just to sh- introduce them to who we are so that we can then give the opportunity to introduce them to Christ. And so we had this really cool opportunity and uh, post that event, I texted him a few times. I think the next slide looks really cool, Chad, because um, we're doing it again this year where we're going to do our Legacy Kids online with my daughter and I in a special edition. We're going to hand out prizes. We're going to just talk about Easter and, and, and the fun. So we're just trying to take advantage of that moment, co- trying to combine what we do online, what we do in physical, because we do have people who don't come to our church, but uh, we'll, they'll make dinner, and then on Saturday night, they sit in front of the computer, and they watch our Legacy Kids online, or uh, one of my friends, whose name is Chuck, he's always watching online, or my mom, my mom is my, probably my number one fan that always watches my uh, Emily and I's Legacy online. I think it's because it's her granddaughter, and she's adorable. Um, so we do Legacy Kids online, which brings me to my next slide, a kind of overview of what we do in general in ministry and what we're hopeful for in the future. This is kind of a snapshot of really what we do in the week. On Sunday mornings, start, uh, start, we'll start beginning of the week, Wednesday's release. Um, that has been, that was a huge success in 2020 and then continue to be one in 2021. It's not deep, right? It's not, I don't call it a deep, super deep ministry. We're not memorizing scriptures. We're not like cracking open the Bible. We do a devotional, we hand out snack and we play games. We're creating community. We're creating opportunities for boys and girls to have fun and have relationships. It came out of a, the moment in the pandemic when um, kids were in front of screens and we didn't want to do one more thing in front of the screen. And so release was created. And it just gives kids an opportunity to get some release, get some energy out. But then also mom and dad to get their kids out of the house for 90 minutes. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, right, ringers? Like sometimes it's, kids are passionate about it. And some kids are like, I don't ever want to see you again. Like I, don't, I hate dodgeball. And some kids are lo- love it. So a release is still a ministry that we average probably the high we've ever had was 39 and 39, and then we're probably mid 20s. Some 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 spikes up into 30s, and we play games and activities, and and uh, there's great relationship building happening. And then we have our Legacy Kids online every most every Saturday at six o'clock. If I'm out of town, then it doesn't work that way. Legacy Kids in person, 10 a.m. Um, at in 103. We also have then our Boys and Girls Small Group, which brings me to the next slide. If you ever see this graphic, it's this is our Legacy Kids Small Group image. It's just kind of the idea. I talked about last week how kids need tribes, and that's kind of what it is. You have a dedicated person that is able to love on kids, um, create this opportunity for community and relationships. Uh, and when it comes to our small groups, there's been times over the years where our boys and girls ministry, Royal Rangers and Bravehearts is what they're called, but to simplify, it's boys and girls small groups. There's been a few moments where, and Colin would test this, that we're just like, 
man, it's like we don't feel successful at all because we're, not, we're looking at the numbers. And then I have to re, like, restart my brain and realize that the reason we, it exists is, well, I won't say the reason it exists, but it exists for my son. <laughs> it exists for my daughter. For, there, was a, there was like one or two years we didn't have a girl's ministry. And my daughter was turning five. And I'm like, oh, no, we're having something for her because she needs women and girls around her that will be a positive influence, that will love on her and create those moments. Um, she needs women to look at. There's like, there's some kids, my kids have probably five, roughly five people that if they were to go to any one of those five people that are in their lives, I would feel completely trustworthy that they would take care of them. Like Colin is a Royal Ranger leader. Ed's a Royal Ranger leader. Nick, like there's these people in those moments where you're thinking, maybe we should do something different. I'm realized, no, like, my son needs this. My son needs these men. My daughter needs these women in their lives and to pour into them. So there's been some times where it feels like we're not successful, but then relationships, it's, it's the long haul, right? It's time. It's relationship, 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 and that's what we care. And then the next slide is our family ministry. It's just a generic slide that I, if you see these online, these are usually associated with those two things. Um, because my hope for in 20. 22, as we are already f- almost four months in, and it's almost gone. It, like Christmas is is a week after Easter, it feels like. Um, I really want to continue to champion families, and if that is providing opportunities for them to drop their kids off, then then let that be it. If it's if it's if families need discipleship classes, if they need a break, if they need events, if they need help, if they need prayer, if they need, we've talked to, uh, Beth and I are trying to help a parent that is struggling with the math in their, in, with their, their daughter. And so like, we want to be there for the family and champion the family because that's where most of the time is spent right? That over 3,000 opportunities in one year versus our 252 in five years. If they were to show up every Sunday morning, right? They have 3,000 opportunities in a year, which is significantly more than we have. So we want to partner with families. We want to champion. We want to love on them, create any opportunity we can to just pour into them and to see um, their family grow. Because eventually they will grow up and move out and um, they'll be on their own. So we want to support families as much as possible. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so, uh, oh, it's okay, Nick. Uh, uh, pa- Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Aaron last year did this video at the very end. So I want, I want to make it, make it official, uh, Chad, if you can put it into the updates. We do have maybe at least three onesies that do need to be filled. So as to tie into what Pastor Garrett just said about like moving into action kind of thing, I have some onesies need to be filled. You're going to love it. It's, it's just interacting with the community, love it on them. And um, so if you want to, or we also need a barbecuer on that day for our Easter, we'll, we'll be contacted in the next week. Pastor Garrett or Pastor Nick? Pastor Nick, there we go. I'm going to be in a onesie. Are you guys going to be in a onesie? I don't know about you. I am. Pastor Kirkley asked, he's like, hey, you need some help? Or he asked me if I could help. I was like, yeah, you know, I'll be in a onesie. Why not? Um, I'll try to be quick. There's a lot of stuff that I was thinking about and that came to my mind about this past year. Just with wins. Uh, For me and my perspective, um, Coming in and being the youth pastor here, which is an honor and a blessing. Thank you all for uh, just opening me up and just letting me be here. Anyways, um, I wanted to put my leaders in a position for the kids to know them. And so I believe except all except for one were actually up there last year to preach, which was super cool. We have I have like there's like seven leaders. Jonathan was I think eight, but everyone was up there. That was super awesome for me. That was a win for me. Um, and in the beginning, it was kind of tough. I looked at numbers. In the beginning, there was times where there was maybe four kids, five kids. But now, 
it's up to about, on average, 10, 11 kids, strong students coming, and it's a awesome. I love them so much, um, and they're all great kids. They, they, they're, they're just great. I love them. Um, another thing that was just a big win I saw uh, was when Brett and Shelly came, with my missionaries from uh, Africa, and a lot of you guys came. Like I'd said in the past, so much support financially came from this church to them that just broke me down, and I loved it so much. The, the kids, they need... They need people to look up to, and and I really want to expose them to missions work and going out and serving with with in the community, but also um, overseas someday. And I think it's I think it's a big deal, and they don't know what they're missing until they really see it, and until God really shows them who He is and, and what He's doing, not just in a Tascadero here, but throughout the whole world. So. Something that I've been thinking about for this year. For me, I'm always in go mode. I'm always thinking about the next thing. And there's certain times where I'm like, you know what? I don't have it all planned out, but you know what? We're just going to keep moving forward, and we're going to figure it out. A um, few things that I'm looking forward to, events. Um, Easter party coming up on April 6th for the youth group. Uh, we're going to have the Busics there helping out. They've been great helping me um, do services. And then... We're going to be having on April 23rd, I'm going to take the students as well as the leaders. We're going to go to Pacific Christian uh, Church in Santa Maria. I met up with the youth pastor there. It's going to be a worship night. There's going to be games, a lot of fun stuff going on. I've been trying to get in connection and contact more with youth pastors here and um, FCA. I, I recently mess, met with the uh, the main guy there of North County, so I'm going to be going to high schools and hopefully junior highs and speaking at lunches to just get more kids involved in knowing who God is, who Jesus is. Because, you know, I, I, for the adults, yes, I would say 100%. Everyone needs discipleship, but I really feel like after 2020, after COVID, and just I see with my generation and the generations younger, we want events. We want something to do. We want that social connection and I really have it on my heart this year. I'm going to push and push and push to go to uh, Pinecrest Summer Camp. That's something, if you guys can help me um, get behind me on that and, and to push the kids to go to Pinecrest. I don't have a slide. They don't have a slide up yet. And, um, but that's something that I'm, I'm really wanting to do is just get the kids exposed to more Christian young students, adults, and just other mentors and people so they feel connected. Um, and something else that I'm really trying to get forward and going is um, Room 200, getting that up and going with, I got some couches, I want to get some lights in there, my dad and I, were going to paint the ceiling, um, I want to do a missions board, there's a lot of different things I want to do there to um, just show the kids what God's doing and, and just to make it a home for them that they can just be and just, just be happy at, they can just be themselves, so... Um, I pray that for this next year that we just continue to move forward. Uh, that's, that's always been my heart and my passion that this, being youth pastor, it doesn't, it's not a job to me. It's, it's life. It's, it's so fun. It's, it's amazing. It's, um, it's so much more. I can't even put it into words. But um, something that God has put in my heart and instilled in me is that I desire, he says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And, and this isn't sacrificial to me doing what I'm doing. This is this, this is amazing. This is life, and I, and I love it. So let's keep moving forward, and um, that's, that's all I got. I don't know who's next. Someone's next. Piss again. Shoot. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pastor Kirkley, Pastor Nick. Of course, there, there are so many other ministries uh, within our church. I, I, I always want to... You know, I don't think we did it last year, but uh, I always want to highlight the food pantry, so I'm going to ask Kyle Fable uh, to come up, both because it's a ministry that's a living, breathing organism that happens outside these walls every single day, uh, and they, they do amazing things, but I think it's important to remind ourselves, so let us know what's going on, Kyle. All Thank right. you. Yeah. And then you'll stay up here. Up there first. Okay. Okay, so um, just it, it really basically, two weeks ago, we served 70 families. That's the most we've ever done. So, I mean, by a long shot. And then last week, we served 62 families, which was probably in the top five. There's an amazing need going on out there right now with uh, the rising prices and things that are going on. So, 
Um, the amazing thing is we have more people down there helping than we've ever had before. It used to be, if we had that many people, we'd be stepping on each other's toes and getting each other's way. That's not the case anymore. So because we've changed with COVID, we changed the way that we're giving food away, we're getting an opportunity instead of taking people into a prayer room, which I think made people nervous anyway, like they don't know what's going on in there. I don't wanna go in there. We just pray for people at their car. And I'm gonna say, I've had one person tell me one time I don't want prayer. People want prayer. People who believe want prayer, people who don't believe. Last week, I heard a lady telling uh, another lady, a newer lady there, she says, oh, when I first started coming here, they prayed for me, and I got healed, and I gave my life to Jesus. I'm like, oh, wow. Let, but, so they're out there telling the story as well as us. So, you know, we're meeting a need. We're feeding people. We're also meeting a need. We're showing people that God loves them. He sees them. And that, that to me, is hugely important. God's providing the food. We just give away what God gives us, and we always have enough. We, when we fed 70 people, we had food left over. Wow. Okay, so, I mean, we, it was like Jesus feeding the 5,000. It was like we, we got more, so it's, it's pretty good. And then the other amazing thing that's going on down there for the people, and you come down one week. If you want to come down one week, come down anytime. If you want to come down and see what's going on, come down. Check it out and, and, and just be a part of it because the people that work down there, as anybody involved in the ministry knows, we're just getting connected. We love each other, and we pray for each other, and it's really amazing to be a part of a ministry, any ministry. So that's what I got. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I... So the food bank has a gleaning program. And so they'll go, so if you have a, a fruit tree, you call them, they'll send somebody over, they'll get the fruit off your tree so it doesn't hit the ground, and then they'll get it to an organization that will give it away. So they needed a, a location uh, in the North County, and so if you ever come by the food pantry and see a little shack out behind the shack, that's the pantry, <laughs> okay, well, that's their, that's, that's slow glean. And so they have their tools in there. They have a truck out there. So when they get a call, the guy comes, he gets his truck, he gets his tools. And then sometimes we get the food, other times it's other agencies, but we are now kind of partnering with them in uh, gleaning in, in the North County. So they wanted to use our property. And I guess it, if, when the, if or when the property sells, I think they're gonna maybe move it up, up top here. They're gonna continue to, to work with us, so yeah. That's that. So now I'm going to ask all current board members to come on up just to reintroduce you getting your steps in today, Kyle. Because <laughs> uh, we're, not, uh, we're not voting on new members this year, but I, uh, I think you guys said, like, why don't we just come up and just reintroduce ourselves? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand them the mic, kind of reintroduce, let them know who they are. You guys can here. Can you come here so you can be on the camera? For the members watching that weren't here and they're hopefully watching this now, hey, members that are watching it later, uh, just, yeah, tell them whatever you want about yourself. Yeah, I was trying to, like, stage, so I'm, like, third, but I'll go ahead and go first. <laughs> uh, my name is Tayon. I'm on a board, obviously. Um, I really love our church. I love how transparent Pastor Garrett is and how relata relatable he is. Um, I just always felt um, grace and love at this church. And I also serve with um, Pastor Nick on, for, uh, with Legacy Youth. So, Kyle Fable, <laughs> you met me. Uh, yeah, I'm husband, father of five. Been coming to church since 1989. Uh, love this church. Love seeing the people. Love coming here and just seeing them. Even if I don't speak to you, I love seeing you. So, uh, anyway, so, yeah. Dana Pangborn, um, I've been coming to this church for about 25 years, and over that course of time, I've developed quite a family um, within the church that's gotten me through a lot of difficult times over years, um, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, one of the things that I particularly like is that our preaching is right from the word and very relatable to today, puts it in terms that we can understand it. 
Um, another thing that I absolutely love about our church is how many young people we have coming, young families. And that is so encouraging to a senior's heart to see so many young families bringing their children and raising them up. So I'm very appreciative. My name is Alina Ringer. Um, I've been on the board, I think this is gonna be my third year. Um, my family's been coming here. I'm a foster mother and adopted mother of four boys. And uh, my, the, uh, I guess my number one thing uh, about the church that I love is um, Pastor Kirkley's team and Legacy Kids. Uh, my boys have gone through a lot of trauma and um, they're just so loved on here and they love coming to church and they can feel that even when they pretend like they don't want to be here. <laughs> um, they really do and I really am grateful for the church family supporting them and just everything they do in Legacy for Kids for my kids and all the other kids, they're really connected. Um, and it's a time when my boys don't think their parents are cool anymore uh, so they don't listen to us, but they will listen to all of you guys. And they, I know they look up to a lot of members here at the church. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Diane Curley and a member of the board. I think this is year four and uh, serving as treasurer. And there are so many things that I love about this church that has kept me here for over 20 years. It started with uh, Pastor Rick and has continued on through Pastor Garrett just the love and the support that um, not only I've received, but our entire family. And it is such a joy to be able to give back for all the people and um, circumstances that people have poured into me, I get a chance to pour back into others. And I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. Uh oh, I got the mic. Um, I, won't, I promise I won't do a whole sermon up here. Uh, so I am Chad Langford. Uh, I've gotten to stand before you guys so many times. Um, one of the reasons why I love this church, uh, you know, uh, currently serving in my second term in the board. I'm uh, now the uh, secretary for the board. And, uh, you know, just real quick, like six years ago, we moved here from Michigan and we started coming for specifically for for youth, for our kids. And I remember after about a month or two, I asked them, I was like, hey, do you guys want to go check out any other youth groups? And they looked at me like I was crazy. And they were like, why would we do that? Why would you even suggest such a thing? I was like, all right, cool. Um, you know, and so we've been, we've been here ever since. I remember when I first got nominated to the board to be, uh, to be interviewed for the board, I thought they were crazy. I was like, you guys have got the wrong guy. Um, like, I don't know who was, you know, out of their mind when they put my name in the hat. But, uh, you know, here I am now and going on my second term. And um, I, I just love the opportunity that the church presents to us as members. Um, because we really have the opportunity to come alongside the church and to, to grow and to pour into other people and to have that discipleship that Pastor Garrett talked about earlier. So um, when, when, when you get tapped on the shoulder, when you get asked to do something, take it to God and see what he wants you to do. Um, don't get stuck in your way. Um, because if I had gotten stuck in my way and just thought that everybody was crazy and that I had no reason to be on the board, I would have lost out on so many opportunities and so many blessings from that. So that's what I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to go over the financials for last year. 2021 was a very interesting year. I'm going to go through um, income first. On all of last year, we had total income of 520874 It was a phenomenal year. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of it. All of the expenses that we had for 2021 totaled out to $357,004.58, leaving us with a net income of $163,869.58. Praise God. <laughs> All him. Let's go through the balance sheet quickly. Um, 
our total um, bank accounts are put in the position of 348,912.41. Total assets for our church, 1,819,658.37. So our total liabilities for 2021 ended up with 6895.50, and our total income for that year is 163869.58. So a little bit of explanation about what happened last year. Um, we were hugely blessed in December with tithes and offerings. And up until that point, things were just being spent the way that we had been given them on a monthly basis and to budget. So December, this huge gift came in. And since then, the board has been looking at what to do with this gift. There are some kind of large deferred maintenance things that the church has got to address, and we are addressing. We've taken care of some things like tree trimming and buying some new chairs for room 200. Yay, been a good thing. <laughs> and um, we're deciding and have some decisions about what's going to happen with that money. A lot of it is going to go toward maintenance and repairs and things that we have not been able to take care of for the past couple of years due to income that has been a little lower than what we had hoped for. So now that we have a chance to take care of these things, we're also investing in missions and in ministry. And we have part of that money sitting in savings until some final decisions are made. So there's been a lot of conversation with the board and we are looking to honor God, our church, everybody that is here and in blessing this facility and the people that are involved in missions and ministry. And I am open for any questions. No? I do believe someone has to approve the financials, is that correct? So we are accepted. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was Dina, then second by Chris and Fable. Okay. We do have to, we are, that was a motion to accept the financial. Uh, report as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Awesome. All right. So kind of current business would be the uh, Del Rio property and kind of giving you a bit of an update on that. So please, a uh, huge round of applause for both a member and our realtor. We love her so much. Jam Buley. So if you looked at the minutes from last year, you could see that um, just right after our meeting last year, the project was submitted, the full package was submitted to the city. Um, the, it's still moving forward uh, and the buyer is still hanging in there. To date, they say they spent about $500,000 so far trying to get the zoning change and the general plan amendment done and get the project completed. We received our, just to kind of, Summarize, we received our second plan check in February of this year. And um, the city has moved the entrance to the project 250 feet to the west. And so it's somewhere near the food pantry now. And so they have to resubmit new plans based on the demand of the city to move the traffic. And so I don't have a copy of this. We just learned this like last month, at the end of last month. I don't have a copy of the new plans yet. Um, so we do have a conceptual that I gave to the board and uh, there's gonna lose another five residential lots. And the plan right now is to um, have that zoned commercial and um, 
they hope to put in tiny homes there or something of that nature. And uh, the buyer is asking for prayer. Um, <laughs> yeah. We were scheduled to close June 2022. Um, last year, they increased the purchase price by $250,000 over our asking price. And uh, in order to get it extended to June of 2022 <laughs> this year, and uh, we're not gonna make it. We, we haven't even gone before the planning commission yet. Uh, we're still trying to get out of the staff uh, of the planning department. And so we're hoping that this will do it. Um, so we need prayer that this will be the final plan that the staff will approve and submit to the planning commission and then the planning commission approve and then submit to the city council and then the city council approve. And so that's where we need the prayer. We also need the prayer that the staff is not going to require an EIR, an environmental impact report, because that will delay the project even longer and cost another few hundred thousand dollars. And so they're asking for prayer on that. Um, I'm praying that we will close at the end of this year, but you know, we have to get through city staff. And um, so until we get them to move the project forward and put through the system that I just described, you know, planning commission and city council, um, we're just trying to satisfy the buyers, trying to satisfy the city on everything. Questions? Yep, okay. <laughs> I feel like we should adjourn for, for, for praying together, like Jan just said. I mean, let's continue to pray, but we know that this, is, this has been, this has been a lot. It's been a lot, and the buyers are through a dot, and it's like $500,000 in red tape, basically, they've invested into trying to get this done. Um, so let's do this. We're going to adjourn, but I need a motion to adjourn. I cannot adjourn on my own. So Rita Kiefer, second by Dennis Geary. Awesome. So meeting is adjourned. You can be gone, but let's close in prayer. And let's all just pray, hopefully, not for the first time, but let's pray over the property real quick. Just end with that. That was a great, great call to action for us, Jan. Um, God, I thank you so much for this meeting. And God, I just pray all of us, we're... we're we're asking you um, for movement uh, for, for this property, for the decision makers, for, for um, our city council. Um, I don't know them well. Um, all, 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 really, all we really know about them is the, the frustration of the last three years have been. And so God, I, I just pray, um, I do, God, I pray you'd move on their hearts. Uh, there, there's just been way too many obstacles, way too much red tape. I pray that they would see our heart as a church uh, these, f these funds are going to be used to impact the community they serve. These funds are going to, we, we want to, we wanted to, like we said f almost four years ago, we don't want talents buried in the dirt. Uh, we want to do something for you, God, and it's just been a long time, and I know Jan has worked so hard, the board, uh, and the many, many different people within the church have worked so hard, God. Um, we just pray for good news. We pray for progress. We pray, um, Gosh, we just, I just pray in the name of Jesus against our enemy, and it seems like he's been just toying with this, messing with this, God. We just pray for things that are being done in darkness be brought to light, um, and that uh, just for, for good news ahead. And, and God, clearly, uh, like we saw, God, we do thank you for your blessing. Um, it just, uh, I, I, I thank you that it's not like we really need the Del Rio property to close because we can't make payroll. Um, you're blessing us. And that's really cool. We're not holding on and saying we can't do things until that closes. God, we do pray that it closes quickly. Um, but I'm so thankful for the people here, for our members, for those that are, I mean, by your grace, both tangibly, literally, the, the keeping the lights on because of the families that are saying, you can count on me. Um, and we're here to serve. We're here to love. We're here to pray. We're here to worship. We're here to give. Um, I thank you so much for the membership here. 
And I pray a special blessing as they help us set up for the Legacy Legends lunch. And everybody said amen. Guys, thank you so much for coming. If you're not uh, sticking around, have a great lunch, a great rest of your day. For the, for the rest of us, oh, we got ourselves a, a burrito lunch coming. <laughs>